the Industry Insider is only available at Promo Corner, the leader in digital marketing for the promotional products industry. Each Monday, they discuss, dissect, and debate a single issue impacting the world of promotional marketing from every industry perspective. Now, it's time for Promo Corner's Industry Insider. Welcome to another edition of the Industry Insider, your promotional products podcast where you can get all the nerdy news you need to know about. My name is Jeff Franklin, National Accounts Manager with Headwear USA. I'm joined today by three other lovely folks, but hey, uh, this awesome broadcast is going to be brought to you by Tech Weld USA, made in a world filled with worry regarding overseas products they offer many USA made products to help separate themselves from the promotional products pack. Hand sanitizers. Look, due to coronavirus, uh, which is still a thing, believe it or not. Uh, hey, look, because of the outbreak, it's something that's, uh, that's trending worldwide. The CDC recommends sanitizing and washing your hands still to help prevent the spread of the virus. Uh, and they've got many sanitizer SKUs that could help combat the spread of the virus as well. Uh, FDA compliance is also a big thing, and they've got FDA compliant. Uh, products in their line and in a time of uncertainty knowledge that a product is FDA compliant is key in allowing the customer to feel at ease when placing an order. So be sure to go check them out at techweld.com for more information. That's T-E-K-W-E-L-D.com. Um, so why don't we, I did say we're joined by three other lovely folks. So why don't we say hi to, uh, to Meg Erber, our good friend, Meg Erber. How are you? I am doing wonderful today. I my daughter had her senior awards thing. The parents weren't allowed to go, but I'm like with had it up on my computer. And her volleyball coach got up there and they were like, um, first team, all conference, most valuable player. And I was like shaking and crying. And I'm like, oh okay, go on. But yeah, I'm just so proud of her and excited. And I just had to say it again. I'm just so proud of her. That's all. <laughs> That's awesome. Stephen McFadden, how are you doing? What's going on? I'm uh, I'm learning how to stand and do this. I'm going to be uber fidgety today, so I'm like trying to remember to stay still. So hopefully I won't make anyone dizzy. But I'm a fidgeter by nature, Jeff. I need to learn how to how to be composed like you. Hey man, uh, fidget spinner. You just you need to you need to get a a stand up desk and uh, basically just lean on the desk. <laughs> okay. I will do my best. Use the desk as your crutch, my friend. Uh, I got it. All right. Megan, not Corey, also known as Megan uh, Pay Payeka. Payeka. I think I said that right. I have no clue. Look, Hooked on Phonics did not work for that name. Uh, how are you doing, Megan, not Corey? Hi, it, it's Payeka, super close, and I'm doing really well. Thank you all so much for having me. I'm super excited. Uh, Long time listener, first time caller, so I'm happy to be here. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Very glad to hear. Don't hang uh, up and listen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, Megan, uh, first of all, congratulations on the uh, the supplier rep of the year. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Uh, very, very awesome uh, accolades there. Thank you. It was such an honor. And I'm just so grateful. You know, it's I love this industry and uh, everything about it. So I was really honored to be a recipient of that award. Very cool. Well, listen, it is uh, customary around here for us to give our special guests, uh, you know, a good three to four minutes to introduce yourself, tell us how you got involved in the promotional products industry, and uh, what you've been up to since. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah. So um, I grew up in this industry. Uh, my dad has been around for a long time, Paul Corey. So I was stuffing catalogs and, you know, learning how to do math on an A. So it's, it's been a long time for me. I uh, started in 2012 officially. I was working at HIT. It was my first job out of college. And I actually worked in customer service at HIT Promotional Products. And I did that and I developed into inside sales. And eventually I went into outside sales for admins in Zagabor. Um, and I handled the Southeast. And coincidentally, within like my first year, at admins, hit um, absorbed admins, and I came back home to hit promotional products where I was doing territory sales um, in the Southeast, majority in Tennessee. And then I grew into key account role, which is where I am working now doing key accounts at hit, and I handle key accounts um, kind of in the Southeast, but a little bit all over. So uh, I would say majority of my promotional career has been at Hit Promotional Products, which is awesome because I truly just love growing with this company. That's awesome. Hey, good people over at Hit too. Let me tell yeah. you. Yeah, we've so had CJ, we've had CJ on as well. So you're the second Hit guest that we've had. 
<laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, today's topic, guys, um, we're going to talk about supply chain issues. We're going to talk about labor shortages and all of the things, all the crazy stuff that's happening right now. So, um, Megan, I know that uh, from what from what Stephen was telling me, I think, uh, you know, Hit has actually been calling in like sales reps to help with production. Is that is that true? Yes, actually, that is completely accurate. So um, starting last year, when we were feeling comfortable, and if your state allowed it, we were allowed to go down to Florida and start helping in our production facilities. So, so far, I've been down there a handful of times, both in Florida and in our and in our Ohio production facility, working on the floor in various positions. Um, any sales rep who is comfortable um, working there is allowed to, and it doesn't just stop at sales reps. Um, you know, CJ's on the floor every single day, our COO is on the floor, all our VPs, um, marketing teams, our PD teams are out there. Uh, it really is a full team effort, just getting bodies on the floor because we are feeling... Um, some strain on our production and, and getting labor out there. So we all have really been doing a collective help of, of getting out there. And I'm truly grateful for that opportunity. I think it's really special that HIT is allowing us to do that, not only because it helps benefit getting our orders out the door, right, and driving sales, but it really allows us to have more knowledge of the factory and have that concept of really how an order gets out the door. Because you know, we can preach it, we can talk about production times, we can talk about labor struggles, but until you're really out there feeling it, it's, it's hard to empathize on what's really going on. I was going to say, it's a double whammy, you know, because not only are you guys helping with production, but you're, you're getting so much knowledge out of doing it and actually being there and experiencing. And I'm sure it's hugely beneficial, actually. Yeah, you would be surprised just how many hands touch an order before it goes out the door. And you know, what these little jobs entail, you know, there's people who have to just take a product, pull it out of the box and then unwrap the product and put it in a container just so that it can get printed prior to it going back into a, <laughs> prior to it going wrapped again and into a box. So there, there really is just so many hands and so many bodies that are required to, to handle these orders. And you know, in 2019, sales were amazing. They were going through the roof. We had the production, we had full capacity. And then in 2020, um, you know, production, you know, went down and labor went down. And now we're experiencing almost 2019 sales with, you know, two thirds of the, the labor force. So it really is hard to get bodies out there on the floor. Do you guys, how long did you guys shut down for when COVID hit? Did you guys close down for a bit of time or were you guys, because you're in Florida, which is amazing country of itself. Uh, <laughs> amazing country. The country of Florida. <laughs> you need a to to get there. Um, yeah. No, we, we did not shut down. Um, we were able to stay open um, throughout the pandemic. And so we were able to right size our labor force based on the, the demands during the pandemic. That's awesome. So one of the things that, uh, that we wanted to talk about as well, like you said, was the labor shortage. So what do you think is attributing to that? I mean, is there like, how is there, I guess, light at the, on the horizon? I mean, what, what is the solution in, in Megan's mind? <laughs> yes, I am no expert here. I am a sales rep with my opinions um, due to, you know, my day to day experience of that hit. But um, I think there's uh, several contributing factors. You know, there is still a COVID scare. People are afraid to return to work. Um, there are issues with child care, you know, um, and being able to stay at home or, you know, get back out into the labor force. Um, being able to get to work. A lot of times we'll see people in the factory, you know, they'll carpool to work. And if someone is sick or, or can't get there that day, that might take out four or five additional employees. Um, and then of course, unemployment contributes, contributes to that as well. Um, but, you know, we're seeing that not just in our industry, this is a worldwide shortage of labor. I was watching Good Morning America this morning and, you know, that was one of their main news story highlights of, the, the labor shortages. So we can't just, you know, pinpoint this just into our industry, which I think is really telling. You're right. And we're seeing it not even just on the production floor. We're seeing this in logistics. 
we're seeing this in sales. We're seeing this a lot of times we're seeing where people were laid off from their great paying job and those jobs just aren't there anymore. And they don't necessarily want to go back to something that's below them. They've worked so hard their entire lives to get to this, you know, this position of, of stature and they're just not ready to, I guess, throw in that, that towel and, and go to making minimum wage, which is understandable. They're holding out. Um, and you hit the nail on the head. I mean, there's, the, the, with the economy reopening and people wanting to get back to work and, and people buying things, it's everywhere. We can't, we, we, we can't, there's like, how do you say this? There, the supply and demand is not equaling out. You know what I mean? The demand is much higher than we can produce. But going back to logistics, there's so many times where an order ships and UPS and FedEx are so slammed and don't have enough people to, you know, push the packages around and put them on the right trucks or even deliver them. And, and they're having to, to like park full trailers and one day production, I'm sorry, one day ship times have turned into 10. It's insane right now. And I know hey, you that's, that's why you work for Brown. That's why I work there. Yeah. If you saw that's the hype. You're, you're, you're pitching in just like, just like the hit sales reps are pitching in with production. You're helping out with the logistics side of things. Wow. I saw, I saw your hype video. Yeah. How many packages <laughs> did you get delivered that day, by the way? Um, None. <laughs> I was she scared. opened them all. I was in my safety vest the whole day the next day waiting for my, my guy to come by, but never happened. So, since you mentioned logistics, I'm going to jump in there if you guys don't mind, because I know I showed you that image uh, the other day uh, with the the basically the backup of some containers trying to get into port. Yeah. And uh, so I'm just going to share my screen here. So anybody that is, uh, a, 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 I'm sorry, a visual uh, observer of the show will get to see this. But if you're audio, uh, I'd encourage you to check out the, uh, the, the, the visual podcast as well. Uh, but basically, Hidware put out a, a newsletter last week, I believe it was, and, and this is basically just an image of all of the containers trying to get into port, you know, all the trucks trying to get in there to basically get their stuff. Uh, I believe this was exported, but it's the same way with imports, and it may actually be both importing and exporting with the folks trying to get in there, but there's a container shortage. Uh, there's a labor shortage. Uh, like you guys had mentioned, um, you know, there's still a COVID scare. I believe I saw or read that, um, you know, one of the, one of the employees at the LA port uh, basically was tested positive for COVID, but they were asymptomatic. So then they had to test everybody and like five or six more people uh, ended up testing positive as well. So, you know, as COVID is still a thing, like I said, uh, you know, in, in the sponsorship ad read, like, you know, it, it is still out there, even though we're, you know, very high numbers of vaccinations now, uh, you know, masks are still relevant, uh, I believe. But, you know, with the labor shortage, uh, because of things like that, you know, it's it's causing backups majorly. So, hey, Me hey Megan, I wanted to, to go back just for a quick second. I know um, I'd love to give you guys just a, a big shout out as well. I know working with our inside and outside reps have been very transparent with everything that's been going on. And I, I applaud you guys for that. Um, but one of the, one of the things that I think a lot of people are wondering as they're seeing, you know, rush productions across the board, just being on pause and, you know, productions being delayed. Do you mind just sharing, like uh, kind of use it as a platform just to let everybody know, like how this actually affects things. You know, I think some people know about issues and they don't really know how it really affects their orders, but I mean, there's a there's a legit uh, time difference now between orders. So if you'd like to share that, I mean, I think it's a great opportunity. You guys have already done it. But for those that haven't listened to you once, <laughs> here's the second time. So, yeah, we are not in a 2019 world. Um, this is definitely a, a new world and production times are, you know, not we, we don't have these 24 hour rushes as you know, frequently as we did prior to um, COVID. Uh, you know, we as a company have been, as you mentioned, Stephen, and thank you so much for the compliment, um, yeah. as transparent as possible with our customers. Um, you know, and I think that's a great thing about HIT is we are a very transparent company. And I think it's important for all sales reps to be as open with their customers, you know, as possible. But, you know, production mm -hmm. is slow down um, and it really kind of just shifts from, you know, certain areas to, different areas. Um, you know, right now we're seeing a huge backlog in shipping um, bags. That production is pretty slow. A, because the demand of bags in any kind of, you know, drawstring bag tote has significantly increased, right? We're seeing a lot of events opening up. Companies are coming back. They're 
rebranding, they're, you know, using promotional tools and, and asking for more product. So the demand is there, but bags is a really slow thing to, to print. Not only do you have to screen it, but then you have to put them on a dryer to dry. So um, there is a lot of backlog just trying to get these bags out the door. So we do try to let our customers know, hey, like this area is going to take a little bit longer than say a heart good item where it might be a little bit faster because we can pad print and then poly bag and put it into a shipping um, box. So it, it really just kind of depends day to day. The, the pendulum is constantly swinging. And what we do is we try to delegate our labor force to the production areas that need the most help um, and kind of base it on production schedules. So there is like no one way to kind of pinpoint exactly. You just have to be open and honest and consistently, you know, talk to your customers, let them know, hey, this is like the estimated production time. You know, all production times right now are based on estimates of, of getting these out the door. Uh, so <laughs> there, there's a lot of balls in the air when you're talking about this, but I think it's so important. We preach this and you see it all over these like promotional product professional groups or um, industry groups, like get to know your rep build a relationship there, have those open conversations, because if you do have these rush opportunities, we don't want to say no to that. You know, we want these sales opportunities. So see if your rep can get into production schedules and let them know, like, are these event dates real? Is this firm? Or are you just trying to get this out the door quickly as possible so you can, you know, be a hero? And I completely understand that. We're all empathetic to these situations of competing sales, especially since sales were so stagnant last year. You want, you know, to get these orders out the door, but you have to have that transparency and you have to have that relationship built with your customer service rep, your outside sales rep, you know, your supplier team. So it really is so important. And you have to just be, I guess, like transparent to your customer as well and let them know the struggles. If you, if anyone in this entire world just turns on the TV and, and sees what's going on, there's, you know, everyone knows that there are the struggles going on right now in 2021. So just be educate, educated and transparent. Our industry is putting out so many articles about this daily as well. Forward that article over to your customer. Let them know what they're, the industry is experiencing. There doesn't need to be some kind of veil behind this. Yeah, it's a curiosity question, Megan. Um, with with uh, reduced labor and all the different types of decorating techniques, are people learning to learn new decorating techniques? Like if I'm a pad printer, have, are they learning embroidery or, you know, is there kind of a, a mesh there as well? Um, you know, I'm not positive. I can only speak to my experiences when working at the factory, but we are constantly shifting as best as we can and treating as best as we can. And, you know, that's another struggle is um, bringing people on and they're coming in green and uh, there's a lot to learn when you're out on the floor. There's a lot of safety protocols. There's a lot of you know, information that, that you're, you're absorbing when you're, when you're working out there and it's very fast paced, you know, you're kind of thrown into the fire and learning as you go and having someone train you. Um, you know, when I go out there, I've worked various uh, areas in production um, from kitting projects, which, you know, is, is pretty time consuming um, to unpacking, which is my favorite um, printing, which is, you know, hard. I printed masks for like four hours and I never want to see a transfer machine again. Um, so you, you do have to like juggle and some people are jacks of all trade, but a lot of these positions, these lower, you know, un, unbagging or bagging a position, um, you kind of start there and, and you grow into to different positions in our company, but we're, we're just doing the best. Um, it's just another adversary that we're experiencing this year, which always seems to be something every year, right? Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's a lot of education and a lot of communication, right? Like you should over communicate. And I'm assuming that's what you're doing with your clients, Megan. And then I'm assuming that's also what you're encouraging your customers to do with theirs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I try to talk to my clients daily. I've built a pretty good relationship with the customers that I do work with on a daily basis. And I've seen a lot of distributors put out great information as well, whether it's on the quotes that they send, you know, all production times are estimated, um, all quotes are given, you know, 30 days because uh, you're seeing supply chain issues. 
um, to distributors putting out blogs, um, you know, letting them know the state of the industry. And I, I don't think you can over communicate enough. Yeah. Do you think there's any, uh, any, any backlash? Like, cause I mean, we all know there's a lot of issues with, um, you know, a, uh, you look at the promotional products, professionals, Facebook page, and that sort of stuff. I mean, it gives people a platform to really, uh, you know, say some things. So do you think there's an issue or, or how do you, how do you, I guess, mitigate the issue if, if you do run into problems? Like, let's say you miss a, an event date or something like that. And then somebody basically cashed the wolves because of that, you know, um, even if you have that same situation somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, the, it, it's hard. Um, you know, if you do miss an event date, I think the savvy supplier rep will go back to their customer and, and ask, you know, how you can mitigate the situation, you know, what's in the best interest of their customer, can they keep the products and use it at a later date, is there a discount, you know, you, you just have those conversations as tough as they can be and, and see how you can turn lemons into lemonade, you know, it's, it, I don't want to say it's the end of the world if you miss an event date because it is like I empathize and I completely understand like this is our job and you know our relationships are dependent on this um but I think you do have to have those tough conversations and just be open you know how can I help what can we do this didn't make it um but if you don't have those relationships it can be hard and I think those that you know maybe lean towards um bashing on these websites maybe not have a relationship with their rep and we see that a lot. Um, I'll get tagged in a post of someone being like, hey, it's hit, is there a rep on hit there? And I would say nine times out of 10, when I do reach out to that customer and say like, hey, I'm Megan from hit, how can I help you? And you, you just start talking to them. Like you're able to diffuse the situation and, and find some sort of solution. I think there's always a solution there. You just really gotta like kind of dig through it and, and figure it out. Um, I'm I sure you experienced that as well, Jeff and Megan and, and Steven. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, knowing that it's not just affecting our industry, it's basically affecting everything. I mean, this is a global supply chain problem and labor shortage. Uh, you know, I think the fact that it's affecting everything else in our daily lives, it, people will be a little bit more, uh, I guess, aware of the situation, but you do still need to over communicate for sure. Yeah. And I think, Megan, you're probably getting the brunt of it and the distributors are because on the hard good side, we have these labor these labor issues. On the apparel side, a lot of it is inventory, not as much labor because it's not a lot of labor to pull t-shirts. I mean, yes, granted there is, but it's not as much as you need on the production floor. So the problems that our customers are running into is when they build out these company stores. Because right now the e-commerce side of things, company stores fulfillment is booming. And I know Steven's shaking his head because when you go to you know, plan out the company's store and the programs, there's inventory, but if it's an ongoing program or maybe it closes two weeks later, that inventory isn't there. So I know what I've been doing and people, my, my coworkers was we, when we were planning these out, we, we tell the customer, listen, set that expectation with your customer. We are in a different world right now. Things are fluid, things are changing. We will try our very best to fill this, but be open that we may have to um, substitute it with a, you know, similar or more or better brand or, or style or something along those lines. But I think if you're setting that expectation up front, it reduces the amount of drama afterward. And I and I can't stress that enough to just you know, over promise and under deliver something you don't want to do. So set the ex expectations ahead of time, you know, until we can all get through this. And the last thing I want to say is I saw something not industry related, but it was on like a local Facebook group. And it was a, a girl who was very poised in her, in her comments. Um, UPS is here. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> hey, where's your, uh, where's the safety vest? Come on. Yeah. But, um, um, she was like, hey guys, can I just ask everyone just to be kind? She's like, I am a teenage girl working in an environment that we are understaffed and every single phone call I get, they, people are rude and they're screaming at me and I just continue to be kind. And, and I just felt so bad for her. Like she's not even in our industry and she is just, you know, out there trying to make money to put herself through college and, and just getting, getting screamed at constantly over what ice cream. I don't even know where she works. It was probably, probably something like the ice cream stand literally. So yeah, the, the adage is true. You catch more, or you know, you catch more flies with honey. Like, just be nice. Yeah, be nice. Is it more flies or more bees? More bees. Oh my gosh, you catch no, more it's flies. flies. <laughs> I catch more flies with honey. 
flies with honey. Would you, you catch would, everything better with honey. How about that? You want to catch flies? <laughs> no, bees. <laughs> I mean, I guess technically you do if you want to like trap them. Yeah, you just catch you catch more flies with honey. That's the saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll make it. Uh, we'll go. We'll let Facebook it. decide. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we did have a comment come in on Facebook, uh, and I figured it was a good enough question to to bring to light to you guys. And uh, so, basically, just asking, do you do you find that uh, customers are more open to alternate styles than before COVID? I do personally. I'll answer. I mean, you guys should all definitely answer, but I think they just don't have a choice. They don't so, have a choice. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I think you just have to be savvy enough if we don't have the inventory, like you can't be like, sorry, no inventory available. You, you need to present a solution. And that's always just offering something new. Um, at, at HIT, I can speak for us, you know, we always carry really deep inventory. That's where we've been very blessed. Um, we are on the, the, you know, we are experiencing supply strain struggles, just like every supplier. But if we don't have this certain product, we have different iterations of that. Um, and you just have to be able to offer a solution. And I think that's what any kind of customer, whether it's me talking to a distributor or Steven, maybe you can, you know, elaborate on this, you talking to your customer, just offering that solution. I think that's what separates yourself from your competitors. Yeah. Um, I mean, to answer, answer the, the question online, I mean, absolutely. I mean, if it's not an alternate piece, it's an alternate color or, um, I mean, I, I would say we were looking at our order data too, and we probably have 90% less rush orders than we did too uh, from 19. And, and that's because like, A, there's not many events, right? Um, but B, we've just been super transparent. Like, mm -hmm. hey, like if you have anything coming up, it needs to be in the next like three months. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, um, and then if you like this piece, it's in stock now, but, it, <laughs> but I'm going to check it every day until you order it because it may not be in stock by the time you do. Um, and we've had to adjust products uh, probably every other order. I feel like we've, it was in stock when they were looking at it. Three weeks later, they get approval and it's not in stock. So we already have some backups ready to go or this color is ready. So yeah. yeah I'm gonna go into sales mode real quick since Meg does this all the time. All right. Look, let's, let this be a lesson to you guys out there as well. People are okay with alternatives. That being said, you can also sell a similar quality product for half the price and make more money under normal circumstances. That's okay. All right. This mess is brought to you by Hedberg USA. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Do um, you guys have any other questions regarding supply chain or labor shortages or anything like that? Any other comments for Megan, not Corey? <laughs> or Herber. <laughs> No, no, you're, you're Meg Gerber. I guess that went over my head. All right, so no questions or comments. Awesome. I guess oh, we can go into rapid fire. Rapid fire. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Megan, did uh, did Meg explain to you what rapid fire is? Um, I've I've listened to your podcast, so I've I've heard ah. some of the rapid fire before, and then nice. I listened to um I used to listen to Bill and or I do listen to Bill and Kirby's new podcast, but their prior podcast where they've done rapid fire, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll do enough. my best. <laughs> fair enough. All right. Well, why don't we uh, why don't we go with Meg Herber first? Why don't you ask your question first? All right. So since we've been talking about um, labor shortages and logistics, I will go with um, pick your poison: UPS or FedEx. Uh, we use UPS. Oh, you did? I thought you guys used to use FedEx more. You guys used to, didn't you? It was FedEx, and um, now we're UPS. Yeah. Yeah, we use UPS as well as our main, but I mean, honestly, with with the situation, it's, it's six and one half a dozen in the other. But I think UPS. Well, we're is, there on time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go with personal hand delivery. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> uh, UP, UPS is who we are preferred is right now, but we have accounts for both. Yeah. Right. Herber. I mean, personally, I would say UPS. I my driver is not hard on the eyes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord! That buys yeah. you next. That buys you next year shipping day or two, right? <laughs> That's your side gig, right? UPS. <laughs> Steve McFadden, how about you? What's your rapid fire question? Um, favorite pastry. Um, cheese Danish. Favorite pastry. Go ahead, Meg. 
<laughs> um, I would have to say probably an Amish market donut. Yeah, fair enough. I would probably have to go with a donut. Just, I mean, it doesn't have to be an Amish market donut. Like, I'm not that fancy, but. Wasn't it just like National Donut Day? Did you guys It get was. Yeah, Friday, right? It's like National Donut Day every day at my house. Actually, no, only when the Amish market's open. So Thursday to Saturday. <laughs> fair enough. All I right, think well. I'm going to. If it wasn't donut, since there's two donuts, I might get cinnamon roll. Tim Hill says apple fritter. That's a pretty good one. It's pretty solid. Pretty good. Oh, one. Oh, also, Megan, I should mention he did say also that uh, you turned out all right, even as Paul, even with Paul as a father. So. <laughs> all right. Um, any? Uh, I guess I got to go next, right? And then yeah. Can- all right. Um, okay. So what area of your life have you also noticed supply chain issues other than our industry? Um, I guess with, you know, you're seeing a lot of that with like food and at the grocery store when you're going um, to buy certain things, whether it's a cleaning household item or just like food in general. And you're also seeing like in the dairy section, you're only allowed to grab two milks max per you know, shopping cart or per individual. So um, you're starting to see that a lot in the in the food industry. Restaurants, um, their menus are getting a lot smaller and their offerings are a lot smaller, which like, I'm a foodie. I love food. I love to eat. And so <laughs> that's, you know, a little heartbreaking. Um, but yeah, you're seeing that a lot. I have a friend who works for Cisco Food and he just talks all the time about, you know, the, the hardship ships there, whether it's supply chain or truck drivers, you know, he's a sales rep and he's pulling food off the trucks himself now and pulling them into the restaurant. So you're, you're just seeing that, but the the food industry is the one that I see a lot Um, as well as just like building, you know, we're constantly trying to like add things to our backyard and the cost of lumber has gone up. I'd like just avoid Home Depot. Megan, you get one thing, damn it. (laughs) Come on, Megan. (laughs) <laughs> all right i'm sorry I'm just like you know but food okay i'll go with food going to the grocery store awesome. um, food. um has been really hard meg Herber. um kayaks yeah kayaks we um i got a, a nice i had a beautiful kayak for mother's day and um we wanted to get one more so we can actually go kayaking um we wanted to get a tandem one we can't find one anywhere we went there was one on rei we went up to it by the time we got there it was gone there's one up there now but i'm um, if i have to pre-order it but yeah I, I, I was going to say food, and my, the first example that came to my head was I went to Bojangles, and I had no chicken tenders. I was like, <laughs> and it, there's signs out there that said, due to the pandemic and supply shortage, we don't have chicken tenders. I'm like, well, they just closed the whole store, because, like, why are you? That point. Like, Can you imagine the outrage if Chick-fil-A didn't have a freaking chicken sandwich? So Chick-fil-A oh. is limiting their sauce, which, you know, it's like you can only get one chicken sauce per meal, Chick- or Chick-fil-A sauce per meal, which is just devastating because that stuff is absolutely right. delicious. <laughs> like crack, right? It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, Jeff, what was your answer? Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I would say like lumber would, would have been the first one. And then most recently, uh, like HVAC parts. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're, we're experiencing an HVAC issue with our upstairs unit and, uh, just trying to get any replacement parts is just a nightmare. Um, you know, you, you could say, um, kayaks for sure. I noticed that like last year you couldn't get a kayak, anything outdoorsy as soon as the pandemic hit, like everybody was grabbing all that shit up. Cause you know, they weren't going to get trapped at home and do nothing. So they started doing all this other stuff. Um, yeah, a lot, lot of things, a lot of things. Yeah, my hen works in an outdoor arena. They like have grills and outdoor items and they stopped all sales for 2021. Um, they have no more inventory to sell. and will not be taking orders again until 2022. What is this again? <laughs> um, grills and outdoor like um, lamps and fireplaces and things like that. It's HVAC. They're they're girls in HVACs. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. All right, Megan. What's your what's your uh, rapid fire question for us? Oh, I forgot to prepare one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> On the spot. You're good. <laughs> On the spot. Um, okay. Favorite. I guess it's so lame. Favorite promotional item. 
Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. <laughs> I mean, of course Sorry. it's a Duh. How about this? How about this? How about we try to answer for the other pe for the other person? I'll answer for Jeff. It's gonna be headwear. <laughs> Next is t-shirt. I mean, Next is gonna be a nice next level. I mean, listen, guys. ASI already answered this question for us. Okay, promo madness. The winner was headwear. It's that's all there is to it. Like, just somewhere. See, look, Meg loves hats too. You know. Okay, all right. I take it back. I take it back. Take what back? Your question. Can't. Too late. You can ask Thank another you. one. The first time in Industry Insider uh, history will a special guest ask two rapid fire questions. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right, rapid go. fire answer. So <laughs> this has been like a, a constant question in my household. Pho or ramen? Oh, that's Pho a good one. Well, oh, I would say I'm actually OG pho, but I've had ramen. It's undisputable. Yeah. Can I get something else at the Vietnamese? Wait, restaurant? wait. It's undisputable. What's your like? Which one? Well, ramen's not Vietnamese, so pho or ramen. Like, what's like your noodle broth soup? If you're right, probably well, ramen. If we're just talking noodle broth. Uh, I, I'm gonna go ramen. Ramen. It's pho. Follow the way. Stephen, what did yeah, you say? You said pho. I'll, I'll say ramen. I need to have more pho though. To be fair, yeah, I, life. I'm literally just saying ramen because it's way easier to get your hands on than pho, you know, right? There's um, a place in the the noodle shop in Vegas, like that's like my go-to lunch. Oh so yeah, I'm taking you out to lunch, we're going to the noodle shop, and we're just ordering pho. It's literally the best thing on the menu. Yeah. There's a new place opening up in our downtown here that's going to be a pho restaurant. So I'm excited. That is exciting. Shut the pho up. <laughs> There was a pho store in Connecticut, but it was like, I forget, it, it was pho, and then it was like King Cool or something. I don't know. And they oh, they no. shut it down, or they wouldn't let them go with it. Yeah. Like, Why not? Cool. <laughs> Live in America, man. Free speech. <laughs> All right. Well, do you guys have anything else to add to this wonderful broadcast? No, I'm just glad that we got Megan. She's amazing. Congratulations again. Um, just incredible. Incredible guest. Thank you. Well, thank you all so much for having me. It's been such an honor and I'm, I'm glad I got to, to share my thoughts and, and all the, the knowledge on this wonderful, awesome, not happy topic. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hey, you're you're there. You, just, you, you, you roboted out on us for a second. Oh no, I'm sorry. Oh, nope. Hey, uh, we did it. We did really enjoy having you as a guest, but uh, look, if you guys uh, got anything out of this, this podcast, uh, I just want to remind you, it was brought to you by our good friends over at Tech Weld, uh, USA made in a world filled with worry regarding overseas products. They offer many USA made products to help separate themselves from the promotional products pack. And uh, they love to, uh, to, to really uh, boast their custom packaging as well. And they love to create new every day. And their custom packaging division is a great example of that. Each box takes on a life of its own and uh, they can work to meet your custom specification needs regarding packaging. And, uh, you know, one thing that I probably should have taken note on was their, uh, you know, their, their, uh, their, their full, full color lunch boxes. Sorry. Uh, I am not <laughs> firing on all cylinders at the moment, but their, their full color lunch boxes are absolutely awesome. I know my kids love them. Uh, anytime we go out, like, you know, out of the house for a couple hours or whatever, they've always got to take one of the lunch boxes with them and pack all their snacks and stuff up in them. Uh, but look, they, uh, whether you're doing a decal imprint or full color imprint, Tech Weld's full color capabilities on their lunch boxes definitely set them, as, uh, set them apart from the pack as well. Um, so go check them out at techweld.com for more information, T-E-K-W-E-L-D.com. You will not be sorry that you did. Um, yeah, Megan, thank you so much. It was wonderful having you. Uh, and I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any more plans to go down to the factory to do some more work? Yeah, hopefully I'll get down there next month. So, you know, if you have a rush order, I'm just joking, please don't email me. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of summer, Tampa in the middle of summer, that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, it's not hot at all. Yeah. Gosh, yes. Or is your factory, uh, is it is it like well climate controlled or because of docks and stuff like that, it's not very? 
Um, it just really depends on uh, the department. And, you know, if you're on a screen printing machine next to heaters, it's very hot. If you are in our DigiBright, you know, controlled room, it's nice and cool. If you're in the label machine room, it's even colder. Uh, so <laughs> pick your poison. No, um, but it most of, for the most part, it's okay. You're fine. Yeah. I'm sure that they take, uh, you know, they've got fans and stuff like that, I'm sure. But I know I've, I've done my fair share of warehouse and, and production work in the past. <laughs> it's, and, uh, yeah. it's, it is uh, definitely fun in the summer. I can only imagine being in Florida doing it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The last time I worked in the warehouse, I had like 19,000 steps. I came home, I lost like five pounds. So if you're like trying to cut your CrossFit gym and you just need to get a good exercise in, we'll, we'll send you to our warehouse. <laughs> Do you think that's Brittany David's secret? <laughs> Maybe. She goes in and works production and just like sweats it all out because she's she's lost some weight man like it's pretty amazing why are you shaking your head in the podcast let's just, <laughs> just... it's true all right whatever thank you guys <laughs> really appreciate you tuning in and we will uh, as meg is shying away from the podcast all right guys really appreciate it thank you so much and uh stay uh, uh come join us again next week uh for another awesome broadcast take care thank you for listening to this week's episode of promo corners industry insider for more great content from industry thought leaders including podcasts blogs and videos visit promocorner.com